Tilly, come. What have you done to yourself? Little patch over there where it's kind of open. It looks pretty good. Hi guys, Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today I'm going to be talking to you about knots. Specifically, the sort of knots that are going to be pertinent for use with bushcraft or camping. We're looking at the event knot, the two round turns and a half hitch and the figure four adjustable knot. Let's get into it. So first off, you may have noticed I have chosen this area here, which is not completely covered by hyacinthoides or bluebells or any other ancient woodland indicators. Because the last thing I want to be doing is trampling all of those to pieces unnecessarily. So if I could find myself a little spot like this, this is going to be an ideal place to set up. Now today I'm going to be using tarp from a company called the Bluestone. These are really lightweight, ideal for sort of a one person. So I'll put a link into those in the box below. <laughs> it's a much bigger rope than I normally use. We're going to have to tidy that end up. Look at the state of that. But all I'm going to do here, okay, is cut off this end. Ooh. And then all we do is take our lighter. Be really, really careful when you're doing this, guys, because there is not much worse in this world than red hot nylon on your skin. So all I'm doing is softening this. And then what you can do, if you're feeling brave, is you can use your fingertips or you can wipe on the end of a stick. But either way, that is now nice and sealed and will do for now. If I had the time and I had some smaller thread, I could even whip stitch the ends of my rope. Somebody you'll see doing an awful lot of that on YouTube is Mr. Dave Canterbury. Big shout out to Dave. He, uh, he's a big fan of whip stitching uh, and long may it continue because it's good. It's going to give you longevity in your rope. But when you're out here in the woods like I am today and you're in a bit of a jam and a bit of a fix, this is the way to go. Okay, top all in a rope. You can see I've got some brightly coloured guy lines on here. Got some pegs and I can always make some if I've got time. So it's going to be pretty important that you find yourself the right couple of trees or uprights to work from. If you're in your back garden, that could be a fence post. If you're out here in high canopy, semi-ancient woodland, you're going to want something like this. It's about the thickness of my arm. And then somewhere around in this radius, we're going to go for over here, another tree to work from. I think that this is going to be absolutely ideal to put my ridge line across and then my tarpaulin is going to come off either side here. So let's go ahead and set up our rope. So this is the part where I wish I had about four hands. I'm going to go ahead and untangle this rope and then I'm going to show you knot number one, which is going to be a basic, what we call a fixed end. Okay, and this is a quick release knot. So all it's going to do is just secure one end and give us the, uh, the opportunity to go and run out the other side. So our first knot is gonna be called the Evenk or the Siberian knot or the Russian knot. It's got lots of different names. It's the same thing. So let's go ahead and look at how it works. Okay, all you need to worry about to start with is one end. Now, there's a number of ways of learning how to tie a knot. And one thing I always try to remember myself is imagine I'm reading a book. Now for me, I read a book left to right, which means every time I'm tying a knot, it starts off in my left hand, okay, with this little piece here and the victim. The victim's gonna go around the back of whatever it is I'm tying and come around to the front. Now you'll notice I've given myself, oh, I don't know, a good foot and a half of room here because this little knot requires you to have a little bit of a tail hanging down. This is your quick release. So let's just put this up at almost eye height, something like that. Okay, now my left hand is gonna go underneath here. Now, if you wanna tell yourself a story, you can make a pistol. It's gonna go under and over over the barrel of, of the gun. Now, you never point a gun back towards yourself. You're gonna put it up into the sky. Now, what you're left with in this hand here is the donkey's tail. Okay, and the donkey's tail, as you go to push that through where the barrel of the gun is, the barrel of the gun is gonna come out. You're gonna take your finger out of here, and this is gonna go through. Okay, like that, no dark art here. Now when I hold on to this first piece and I give this a little tug and I go left to right with it, okay, what you'll notice is that that loop is maneuvering itself into such a position that I've got the loop in the top and the tail at the bottom. Okay, when I pull the donkey's tail, the whole knot comes apart. Let's just go through that. Okay, it's come apart and I'm gone. So top tip, pop a little stick into here. Okay, if you're feeling brave, you've not got much to lose, 
go ahead and put loads of weight on that knot just to make sure that you're happy you've tied it correctly if you fall over you haven't then we're going to head over to our next tree now we're going to look at knot number two if you look back okay we haven't got much tension on here yet we need to try and make this nice and taut i'm going to go left to right that's my first move make sure you pull all of your rope through okay now you'll see, as I go and head and tension this and make it about as tight as I can make it to start with, it's fairly level and about eye height. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go over the top. All this rope is going over the top. Okay, gonna get as much tension on there as possible. And then this is gonna go around the back. Now, as I crank down on this, okay, that starts to get a hell of a lot tighter. Okay, that's my first time round. So notice I'm walking around the tree. Okay, and then I'm gonna go, just like I did last time, over the top again, and I'm gonna pull all that rope through. So I'm now gonna pull back again, and now this thing is getting real tight. And I'm gonna go all the way around to the other side. And now I've got the same picture I started with. Okay, this puts me in a position where I'm pretty much going to make the same knot again, the Yvenk or the Siberian knot. Go under and over, face the tree, up in the air, pull the donkey's tail through. Okay, and just pop that through there. Now pull down. Okay, now this should tighten the whole thing up. Okay, so this isn't going anywhere in a hurry and you've got a little bit of extra rope left over. All I'm going to do just pop a loop through a loop and just keep that process going, that Dutch lacing which gets my rope up off the floor. And that's pretty much it. But that's your ridge line established now and we go ahead and get our tarpaulin up and over. Go ahead and deploy your tarpaulin. Now when you look at this, the big giveaway is usually the manufacturer's writing, or in this case, the blue stone, okay, is going to be on the outside of the tarpaulin. You'll probably notice on the inside there will be some sort of central ridge to this shiny material here. Okay, that wants to be underneath. All you're going to do is go and feed that over the top. So first things first. Some of you may be saying, well, I'd have used a trucker's hitch to get the tension on between the two trees. Guys, two round turns and a half hitch is about as traditional as it gets. And then we're into our third knot. So you only need these three for this whole process, okay? And we're gonna be learning this one now is the figure of four slippery adjustable knot. So I'm gonna take hold of my rope and I'm just gonna lay this over. In my left hand, I've got the victim and the right. Now you can kind of see, hopefully, that number four. And my hand is gonna go inside and pull the tail through once and inside and pull the tail through twice okay now what that's going to give me let me just take up the slack here as you can see how that's jammed on there now and that has bitten onto the rope lovely so this is going to be nice and constricting and tight as i pull over this way now what i want to do is put my hand up underneath and it's going to go under and over I'm going to point this back towards the tarpaulin and then up to the sky. And as this finger comes out of this hole, this whole lump I've got here is going to pass through, okay? And I'm going to pull this all the way through to the very end and let that tighten down. And now what I've got, just have a look guys, is I've got a knot that I can, I can put real tension on this tarpaulin and keep it super tight. And of course, if there's any dripping going to happen, it's going to hit this. This is all so tight that it's bitten into the rope and it's going to run down here. We speak from personal experience. Now the next thing you're going to go and do, once you've got the tension in your ends, you're going to work out your middles. So I'm going to take the middle out this way and the middle out that way. And we'll do the corners last because that's how you achieve those Instagram perfect tarpaulins that you see everywhere. Okay, now making sure that this is going in at the appropriate angle, it's going to be the same thing again. So I'm going to come around here and make myself a number four. And then all I do is get hold of the left hand side of this and give it a pull. And you can see that tension coming on there straight away. Now, if you end up with a load of this stuff left over, 
don't worry too much just roll it up now why this knot is really really important is because if you're in a bit of woodland like this and you get a sudden massive gust of wind okay that gets up underneath your tar tarpaulin tries to wrench it from you the knot tends to give okay and then you wake up to the sound of flapping tarpaulin at worst case scenario you get out of bed and you just simply readjust it. Ta -da! If you tie things off and make them as tight as you can, what will happen is generally tends to rip these. I've seen it rip eyelets out and I've seen it rip the stitching off here as well. So you have to build in a deliberate weakness because you will never win against mother nature. All you're gonna do now guys is go ahead and peg the sides out using the same figure of fours all over again. That's it basically set up behind me now. All I'll do is go and sit on my little ground sheet and probably get a, a nice coffee on. Guys, please let me know what you think of this kind of person of view style bushcraft video. Do you think it's helped you? Do you think it's been a better tutorial? Let me know in the comments below. That'd be really, really helpful uh, because it is going to help to shape the way we continue to develop the channel. I just want to also say massive, massive thank you to all of you who have hit the subscribe button. Oh, she's just about to start bubbling away there. Would you like a coffee, Moo Moo? You don't drink coffee. You don't drink coffee. Oh, turn my back on that for a second and that is boiling. Put the good stuff in there. Glorious. It's such a simple process and it, yet it does so much. Personally, for my mental state to just get out here, I feel very, very fortunate to have access to this incredible resource which at Hidden Valley Bushcraft we're going to be using for education now on top of our other woodland site where we've just built the cabin. Be sure to check out the upcoming video on the cabin. All I can say now is cheers. I'm going to enjoy this coffee, take in the woodland and enjoy a bit of peace and quiet. That is glorious and no I didn't weld my lip to it because I've actually waited those of you are about to comment about welding lips to this and I just let it cool down take your time remember it all depends on why you got into this in the first place but for me spending time in the outdoors was about slowing down now that really is the premise behind why we do this channel to help you guys master the outdoors and ultimately to begin to master yourselves thanks so much for joining me today uh, and Tilly Moo please continue to like share and subscribe to our content bye for now ready sit Wait, go on then. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good girl.